Hello there once again and um, welcome to this business class brought to you by O3 Schools Jump App. Um, O3 Schools Jump App is an application which you can install on your Android phone or your Windows laptops with which you can prepare for your jump examination. Now it has several features including past questions, so um, you can write mock exams, you can try search for questions by topics, there are quizzes and a lot of other fun stuff to help you as you learn. Um, but to assess these features cost the sum of 2,500 Naira for activation of the app. So simply download the app, activate it, and you are good to go. Now, I know some of you might have been defrauded by some apps maybe, but that should not make you doubt this one. This might just be the one you need, all three schools, then that. So please get your app. And with that, we are good to go for today's business class. All right, and um, in this class, we shall be looking at heat and expansion. Okay, um, now, as you may well know already, heat is simply a form of energy which travels from one object to another due to temperature difference between the two objects. However, once heat flows from a body, what happens to that body? Um, as you should be aware, one consequence of heat is increase in temperature. Increase in temperature. The presence of heat makes your temperature increase. Why the body losing heat has its temperature reducing. Now, on that effect is expansion. The addition of heat to a body makes that body increase in physical dimensions. So the size tends to increase. Addition of heat. Why removal of it makes the size decrease. Um, another effect of it is change in physical properties. Now, some physical properties change due to heat. Um, then also, chemical properties may also change. Change the chemical properties. There's also change in resistance. The resistance of any metal changes with increase or decrease in heat. Then obviously, we also have change of state. Yes, change of state, there's no change in pressure, as you can know from Boelzo. Okay, so however, right now, we're focusing in this topic on the expansion effect of heat addition. The expansion effect, and we refer to it as expansivity. Expansivity. Now, this expansivity occurs in three different ways. We have linear. We have the area, which is also called superficial expansivity. Then we have the volume, which is also called the cubic expansivity. So yeah, on that expansivity, there are three different ways to look at it. Now, what is the difference? In linear expansivity, we are studying expansion in only one dimension, and that is length. In area expansivity, however, we are looking at it in two dimensions, which is now area. While in volume expansivity, we are studying it in all three dimensions, and that is volume. So that's the basic difference. For linear, all we are checking is increasing length, forgetting whether the area of something else is increasing. For area expansivity, we are still checking for the increase in area, neglecting whether the thickness is also expanding. I have a volume expansivity, we're looking at all three dimensions at once. Okay, now um, to start off, let's focus on expansivity itself, starting with, of course, the simplest one, which is linear expansivity. Now, what is linear expansivity? The definition of linear expansivity is that this is the increase in length of an object per unit length of that object per degree rise in temperature. So it measures how the length increases per initial length for every degree rise in temperature. And the simple formula for this becomes that linear expansivity represented by alpha equals L2 minus L1 all over L1 change in theta. Where alpha is your linear expansivity, L2 is the final length, L1 the initial rent, 
and change the theta is the change in the temperature. And from this, you're one of those who like new formulas. There are other formulas you can get from here. For example, if I cross multiply, I will get that L2 minus L1 equals to alpha L1 change in theta. And um, some people prefer to write this L2 minus L1 as simply change in length equals to alpha L1 change in theta. So this is yet another formula you can know. Then um, if you want to get another, let's come back here and say L2 will be equals to alpha L1 change in theta plus L1. And therefore, L2 will be equals to what's common here is L1 into 1 plus alpha change in theta. And this is yet another formula. So as you can see, if I want to find my expansivity, I can go straight with this. My change in length, I can go straight with this. And to find just my new length, I can simply go straight with this. And one of the easiest things about this topic is that for the area and volume expansivity, there is no much difference in the formulas. Now, area expansivity is given by beta, and this is equal to A2 minus A1 over A1 change in theta. So if you notice, they're basically the same thing because the definitions are perfectly identical. Um, I have already stated the definition for linear expansivity. But for area expansivity, we simply have to know that this is defined as a change in area per unit area per degree rise in temperature. And you notice that that is pretty much the same as the definition for linear expansivity. With the only difference being that where we had length, we now have area. And also volume expansivity given by gamma is equal to V2 minus V1 over V1 change in theta. So again, the same exact definition. Only difference is instead of length in the first one, we now have volume over there. So as you can see, these are very, very simple. Don't forget, this is your cubic expansivity. This is the area expansivity. Why this is the linear expansivity. And that is a basic idea. However, at times, maybe ask to solve for area expansivity when you are given linear. All you have to note is that there's a relation between alpha, beta, and gamma. And what's the relation? It is that beta equals to 2 alpha and gamma equals to 3 alpha, such that automatically gamma equals to 3 beta over 2. So you see, it's this simple. In case you are solving for area, but all you knew was linear expansivity, this is your formula. In case you are solving for volume, and all you know is also linear expansivity, this is your formula. And if you were solving for volume, but what you knew was area expansivity, this then becomes your formula. You see, the, um, as far as the story part of this topic is concerned, we're about to treat it now. These are the calculation parts. Now for the story part, um, First, we have to look at this conductors and, well, as some people like to call it non-conductors, but I prefer calling them insulators. Now, in terms of heat transfer, different materials conduct heat differently. Metals conduct heat better than, say, wood. And as such, metals are better conductors. So those materials which allow heat to pass through them easily are known as conductors. Those which do not allow heat to pass through easily are known as insulators. I prefer calling them insulators and not non-conductors because eventually these materials we allow it to pass through. They just don't make it easy. By looking at the logic of the English, a non-conductor means heat does not pass through, but that's not quite true. Heat passes through. It's simply not very, very easy. So that's the idea. You have conductors and insulators, and basically, pretty much all metals are conductors. While we now also have insulators, so things that don't let heat pass through easily. Like um, your cement blocks don't let it pass through easily, wood, and some of that things. You should be able to use your logic and common sense to analyze this. Now, in terms of heat, now heat can travel in three different ways. There are three ways for heat to travel, and they are conduction, convection, and radiation. Let's go here. We say we have conduction, convection, and radiation. Now, when we say conduction, this is the transfer of heat 
by the vibration of the molecules. Now this occurs in solids and at times in liquids. Whenever the heat is being transferred probably by vibration, they are at conduction. However, for convection, transfer of heat by actual movement of the molecules of the body. Um, you are boiling water, for example. You want to say, as water boils, the water at the bottom begins to rise to the top as it gets hotter. While the one down, the one the up rather, moves down to replace the one down that just went up. See, the molecules are actually moving. That is convection. But radiation is transfer of heat without any material whatsoever. Example, the heat coming to us on Earth from the sun. So that's the basic idea. Radiation doesn't require material medium. Convection is the one where the molecules actually move. By conduction, simply occurs if the molecules are vibrating. For example, you can have molecule, molecule, and molecule. If something was to hit this molecule to set it to vibration, it's going to vibrate and hit this molecule in front of it, transferring the energy, which then vibrate and hit this one, also transferring the energy forward. So this is conduction. Why in convection, the molecules actually move from one place to another to transfer this heat. And um, those are the three methods of heat transfer. And basically, yeah, um, in radiation, please you should note, black color absorbs heat better than white. So the darker the color, the easier it absorbs heat. Which is why it is preferable to wear a white shirt on a hot day than a black shirt. Because the black shirt will absorb heat more, making you sweat more. Though, of course, in Nigeria, with the common sense view, if you wear white, you figure your white will get stained more. But in sense of heat, the white is actually better than the black. Alright, and with that, I believe it is time for us to open our O3 screws, jump up, and get our questions. Now, um, remember, this is where you need to have your app ready. It makes it so much easier for you to find your questions because you can simply search for your questions depending on the topic you just select. You can just go to the search feature of the app, search for questions, and once you learn any topic, you can just begin to solve them, making your reading so much easier, which is the same feature I'm going to be using right now. So, um, to start, let's see. Our first question comes from the year... 1998 and this is question number 17 of that year 98 question 17 okay now um, the question says the linear responsivity of brass is 2 times 10 to the power minus 5 per degree celsius so linear responsivity remember that is alpha 2 times 10 to the power minus 5 per degree celsius if the volume of a piece of brass, if the volume of a piece of brass is 15 cm cube at 0 degrees Celsius, obviously, this must be my first volume. First volume, first temperature. We have been asked, what is the volume at 100 degrees Celsius? We want to find the second volume given the second temperature. Now, see, this is quite easy. First of all, I need to find my change of theta. And change of theta is going to simply be 100 minus 0, which is 100 degrees Celsius. Now, if you notice one small problem, if I'm dealing with volume, my formula should be gamma equals V2 minus V1 over V1, change of theta. Or, if you want to learn this, a shorter formula, just like we did for length, we know that V2 will be equals to v1 into 1 plus gamma change in theta and in case you are confused how i got this remember i told you the formula for length and volume and area are all quite similar therefore if l2 equals to l1 1 plus alpha change in theta i'm simply changing my l for v and my alpha which is linear expansivity for gamma which is now cubic expansivity so that's all we've done However, we do not seem to know gamma, it says no alpha, which should then remind you about the relationship as we stated between the three expansivities. And you know that gamma equals three alpha. So that becomes three times two times 10 to the power minus five, which is simply six times 10 to the power minus five per degree Celsius. And once I know this, I am now ready 
I try to put my values into my formula and get my answer. V2 be equals to V1, which is 15, open bracket, 1 plus gamma, which is 6 times 10 to the power minus 5, times change in theta, 100 minus 0, which is 100. So, V2 equals to 15 into 1 plus, now this times this. To do it quite quickly, I remember that 100 is 10 to the power 2. And this is minus 5. Since they are multiplying, I'll be having 6 times 10 to minus 5 plus 2. And that gives me 15 into 1 plus 6 times 10 to power minus 3. Now at this point, to make our solving much easier, we have to remember we are using the jam calculator. This calculator doesn't include standard form. So what can we do? D2 will be equals to 15 into 1 plus 0 0.006. Removing your minus means you have to take your point back three times. 1, 2, 3. Therefore, V2 equals to 15 times 1 plus this is 1.006. And now we can simply go to our calculator, as you can see right there on your app or on your jam system. And you can press your values in your calculator simply uh, 15 times 1.006 and that will give me 15.09 cm cube to which if i go back to my app and check my options that is option c so you see the steps are quite easy just Remember your formulas and apply. Very, very simple. Okay. Now, for our next question, we are told, on a fairly cold rainy day, when the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. Now, on this day, we are starting with the temperature at 20 degrees Celsius. The length of a steel railroad track is 20 centimeters. So, the length at this temperature is also 20 centimeters. Then, what will be its length on a hot, dry day when the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius? Temperature has increased to 40 degrees Celsius. Want to find new length. And then we are told that coefficient of linear expansion of steel, which is alpha, equals 11 times 10 to the power minus 6 per Kelvin. Now keep in mind, whether they use per degree Celsius as units or per Kelvin, doesn't change anything to us. So, just like previously, the first thing we'll find is change in theta. This is theta 2 minus theta 1. That will be 40 minus 20, which is 20 degrees Celsius. Or the same as 20 Kelvin. Doesn't matter what you need to put. So, using our formula to get the length directly, I will know that L2 equals L1 into 1 plus alpha change in theta. So, L1 is 20, 1 plus alpha is 11 times 10 to the power minus 6, and change in theta is 20. So, L2 will be equals to 20 into 1 plus. Now, how do I multiply this? I can simply say 2 times 11, 22. Now, because this is 20, this will remove, this will add 1 to this power. So, that becomes minus 5. Then L2 equals to 20. Now, again, remembering my calculator doesn't have, you know, standard form. I have not expressed this in normal decimal points. That will become, I'm moving my point back five times, 0 0.00022. Confirm, see from 22. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's all. So that will give me 20 times 1.00022 and just like before now i can try apply my normal jam calculator which i'm doing right now and saying 20 times 1.00022 and my answer is 20.0044 centimeters and if i look at my jam app that is option c now you may be confused. They simply took their answers to 
three decimal places. So if I did the same, that's how we stop here. And that's what we have at option C. All right. Moving on, more examples. Notice they are all quite similar. Metal rods, each of length 20 meters. Again, we are starting with length of 20 meters. Each are laid end to end to form a bridge at 25 degrees Celsius. Again, the temperature for these 20 meters is 25 degrees Celsius. Then, what gap will be provided between consecutive rails for the bridge to withstand 75 degrees Celsius? Now, this might require a bit of explanation. If this was the bridge, yeah, let's say we have one rail here, they don't build them end to end like this. Because this one will be prevents with heat. As it begins to heat up, this will make the bridge buckle. That means here yeah, it tries to go forward, here yeah, it tries to go forward. So they'll meet each other and you know, begin to stick up. Which if you've seen a rail, that's not good. That would derail your train. Therefore, what they do is that they give gaps between the rails such that when they expand, this can expand forward, this can expand forward. And for the calculation to do that, all they need to note is the average temperature which the environment can get to and the length temperature at which they are installing. So once you do the calculation, they want to tell the safety allowance they can leave so their rails can expand. In this case, we have been told we want to find the safety allowance if my rails can expand up to this. So what kind of distance should be left? So to know the distance that will be left, it means this guy must actually be the one expanding there. So how far can it expand is the question. So how to find the change in length. Okay, the distance it can expand is the extension. How far is it expanding so I can give that space, that would be my gap. And then um, in my question, I should know that alpha is two times 10 to the power minus five a Kelvin. So as I'm able to find change in L, you remember, I think I have a direct formula for that. Change in L equals to alpha L1 change in theta. All I need to do first of all is find change in theta. That is 75 minus 25. And that will give me 50 degrees Celsius. So it starts, I know my change in theta. So putting my values in, alpha is 2 times 10 power minus 5. L1 is 20. And change in theta is 50. Again, remember, a calculator cannot do this, right? Let's see if we can solve anyway. Um, 2 times 20 is 40. And 40 times 50 is 2,000. Then times 10 to the power minus 5. Then, obviously, to express this in standard form, my point is going to move back 1, 2, 3. That will be 2 times 10 to the power minus 2. Then, if you look at my options, they are all in linear form, not standard form. So, for minus 2, my point will go back twice. 1, 2. 0 0.02 meters. And again, option C. Now, the fact that my three questions have in option C, please, should not make us believe that all questions in this topic have answers in option C. Uh, so, we'll notice shortly. But for now, that is my simple answer. Now, before I solve example 4, I would like to do a little bit of further explanation as regards the consequences of heat and more accurately, the consequences of expansion. When things expand, are there uses, are there applications, what do you do with expansion? Um, one of the things most know about expansion that we just used in this last question is in this design of railways. Because of the expansion, that's why you have your gaps between rails. So rail gap as very, very necessary. Two, if you look at bridges, they have to apply this in bridges. Bridges are mostly metallic. And because of expansion, if I have a bridge like so, rather than fix this end and fix this end, what is done is that you fix one end and put the other end on rollers. Why? Such that if this bridge begins to expand, as mean both ends were fixed, they will be pushing against their foundation, which could either change the shape of your bridge or destroy the foundation. In this case, if they are rollers, the bridge simply rolls on top of the rollers. 
inside that my bridge remains its nice shape rather than getting deformed or buckling. So we use it in bridges. Then um and that effect of application is in fitting of rings of tires. Now, if you have a metal, I have to fix it into something. You want this fit to be very, very tight. Rather than struggle to push it in, what you simply do is that you can cool this metal such that the temperature drops down. If the temperature drops down, then that your metal becomes smaller, like your ring. And once you put this ring smaller into the tire, and allow it to go back to room temperature, your rim expands, becoming bigger and fitting perfectly into this tire in a way that would have been very, very difficult to do by hand. Okay? There is no sagging of wires. All of us must have noticed this at the point in our life. But when people hang wires from pole to pole, they never hang them straight. They always hang them with a little sag. Why? The real reason for this side is because if they were straight, what happens when the temperature gets very, very cold? That wire will want to contract and get smaller. But if it is early straight, there is no allowance for it to get smaller. That wire will cut. But if this one with a gap tries to get smaller, it may get smaller and then look like this first one on top. My wire is still safe. And when temperature rises, it expands back. So that is the reason for sagging of overhead wires. Then they also use this of this expansion, just like the fitting of rims. You can use this expansion with your bimetallic strip. What's a bimetallic strip? A bimetallic strip is simply made up of two different metals that expand at different rates that are welded together. So this could be one metal, maybe iron. This could be another metal, maybe brass. The point of this is that if these metals want to expand, and let's say this one behind is expanding more than the one inside, then when they expand, it becomes something like this. The one inside has to curve because the one outside is expanding more. And therefore, this curvature has several applications. In your electric ions, for example, when ironing at a certain point, you can hear a snap within your iron. And then the light goes off and then you keep on ironing some more and then you hear the snap again and your light comes on what's happening it's simply a bimetallic strip when the wire gets too hot or rather when the iron gets too hot this guy breaks contact with the wire and current cannot flow without you know connection and contact therefore your iron goes off and then as your iron begins to get colder now there's longer passing current it begins to straighten up until it is back in this form and then current can flow again. Same thing with your fire alarm. They are designed such that once they feel heat and once the alarm senses heat, this guy to rise in temperature would bend and you know make contact with the bell, which makes you hear that loud sound. But yes, yes, currently, you know, the system something going on, there's heat. While um once it gets cold again, it detaches and your alarm goes off. Okay, and then one other very important thing to know, which I neglected to explain before, is something referred to as the anomalous expansion of water. Now, water is very, very special. Not just because you drink it, but because anomalous means abnormal. Water expands in an abnormal manner. Meaning, while your normal liquids, but while most metals are most liquids have a simple principle, you apply heat. They increase in size you remove heat they decrease in size water has a special range which is between zero degrees celsius basically and four degrees celsius you know before it freezes yeah water behaves funny what happens there as you apply heat to water if you have water above four degrees celsius as you're applying heat it will expand and as you're removing heat it will begin to contract right yes but what it does is that it contracts until the temperature gets to 4. Once the temperature gets to 4, rather than continue to contract, this water decides to just switch. And instead of contracting, it begins to expand. That means water contracts to 4 when freezing, then expands. While if you are heating it, it does the same thing. 
it may do the normal thing until it gets to four. Once it gets to four, it simply flips it. And therefore, I will refer to this as anomalous expansion of water. Therefore, that's the reason why your ice block in your fridge, when you fill your water out, a can. When you fill a can with water, place in your fridge. When this thing freezes, the can expands. That's because the ice is taking up a bigger volume than the liquid water again because of anomalous expansion. And as you are aware, density equals to mass over volume. That means when this volume is increasing, density is reducing. So right here at 4 degrees Celsius, instead of as you are with the moving heat again, remember it should be contracting. Once it gets here, it begins to expand. Therefore, below 4, the volume is increasing and therefore the density is reducing. And that is the reason why ice floats on water. Because ice is less dense. So okay. So let's get this out of the way. Then um one more tiny thing you should just know because they've asked this question before in Jam, which as far as a matter of fact, let's try and find this question. Yes, it's now O3 schools jam app. Um sorry. Yes, okay. This one is from the year 2005, question number 15. The question simply says, when very hot water is poured into two identical tin and glass tumblers in equal volume, why does it take one crack? Question is, if I have a cup like this, this is a tin cup and I have a fat cup like this. If I was to pour water within both of them, the same water, and these two cups are made of the same material. Why is it that the thick one will crack and the thin one does not crack? And then, the simple answer, please note, is the uneven expansion of glass. What's happening here is that I'm applying heat here, or cold basically here. Here is cold, hotter than here. As a result, this hotter part wants to expand very, very fast. But this colder part that is far from it, is not feeling that same heat. So instead of both sides moving uniformly, this side here may want to move, let's say 20 cm, while this one here may want to move only 5, which means they are not moving at the same rate, and as such, that cup would crack. But for a thin cup, because of how thin it is, the heat here and the heat outside are the same. So if I move 20 cm, the one outside also moves 20 cm, and there's no way for us to meet and then crack. So the simple answer, because of the uneven expansion of the molecules of glass. So, with that, let's go back and solve more questions. We just answered the fourth one. Um, okay, and we actually have a fifth one though. The fifth one says, quantity of water is heated to about 30 degrees Celsius. The quantity of water at 4 degrees Celsius is heated to about 30 degrees Celsius. At each degree rise in temperature, its density will. Now, all into this, that this is getting heated, right? I know normally as you heat, volume will increase and therefore density will reduce. But again, remember, water behaves anomalously. Therefore, what happens? Between zero and four, it does the opposite. Instead of the density reducing, the density will increase. See, as a special property of the anomalous expansion. This will first of all increase between 0 and 4, and then after 4, it then behaves like every other thing, and therefore density will now begin to reduce. And that means that my density will increase first and then reduce, which is my option is B. It will rise, then fall. See the idea? Now, this is from the year 2000, question number 25. Okay. Let's move on then. This one is also theoretical from the year 2006, question 44. It says, what is likely to happen if the glass of a thermometer expands more upon heating than the liquid inside? Again, let's draw a diagram. If this is my glass of the thermometer, let's pretend it's a cup, basically, and this is water. If I apply heat, remember, the water will expand, the cup will expand. Now, if both of them expand uniformly, then 
my volume will remain pretty much the same. The height of my liquid will remain the same. It doesn't seem to go anywhere. However, what happens if my cup is expanding and my water is not expanding as much? Then instead of my water appearing this high, my cup has gotten fatter. So my water level will seem to go down. Therefore, that means in this case, the liquid will go down in the stem, option B, because my container is now bigger, expanding at a bigger rate than my liquid. My liquid will go down. If my liquid was expanding at a bigger rate than the container, then my liquid would have gone up. While if their rates were somehow equal, then they would have remained at the same level. See? Very simple. Let's move on. Now, this is a proper calculation question again. This is from the year 2007. The year is 2007. And the question is number 28. Okay, this is our fourth calculation. So it is our seventh question in whole. Now, this one says the ratio of linear expansion of two metals, alpha 1 over alpha 2, is 3 ratio 4, which is basically 3 over 4. If when heated through the same temperature change, what that simply means is be noting them down. Temperature change in the first one is the same as the temperature change in the second one, the same temperature change. The ratio of the increase in length of the two metals, E1 over E2, the ratio of the increase in length. Rather than using E1, we've been using change in L as increase in length. So change in length 1 over change in length 2 equals to 1 over 2. We are told, therefore, that the ratio of the original length, L1 over L2, is what? Now, please take note, this L1 and L2 here do not represent initial and final length again, so much as they represent length of the first one over length of the second one. Now, how could we possibly find this? All I will call you to do is, remember your formula, L2 equals to L1, 1 plus alpha change the theta. But if you look at this, this doesn't help me much. And notice I have change in L, right? So I'm going to be using a formula that also has change in L. And what is that formula? Change in L goes to L1 alpha change in theta. Right? Therefore, if I was to make L1 subject of formula, I would have to divide both sides by alpha change in theta. And I will know automatically that L1 goes to change in L over alpha change in theta. And instantly, if I use that logic over here, for my first one, L1 over L2 will be change in L1 over alpha 1 change in theta 1, which is for the first person, over is divide. While for the second one, that will also be change in L2 over alpha 2 change in theta 2. Then as usual, divide turns to times. Change in L1 over alpha 1 change this theta 1 times alpha 2 change in theta 2 over change in L2. Then if you look here, these are equal. Therefore, change in theta 1 cancels change in theta 2. And please note the steps. This is very, very simple. Just that instead of solving with numbers now, we simply have a lot of letters, so try not to let them confuse you. And so this will give me that L1 over L2 cross to alpha 2 over alpha 1 times change in L1 over change in L2. You see? Now if I come here, alpha 1 over alpha 2 is 3 over 4. Therefore, alpha 2 over alpha 1 will be 4 over 3. Basic mathematics, we are flipping both sides. Then change the L1 by change the L2 becomes 1 over 2. And then 2 year 1, 2 into 4 is 2. So my answer becomes 2 over 3. My ratio must be 2 ratio 3, which is option A. So you see, these are all simple questions. I simply have to follow the method and get your answer. Okay? Question 5. This is from the year 2007, question number 36. This one says that a blacksmith heated a metal 
whose cubic expansivity is cubic expansivity is 6.3 times 10 to the power minus 6 k Kelvin. The area expansivity is this is a simple equation in this topic as you can find. But if you remember, the relationship between gamma and beta is that gamma also 3 beta over 2. And then we're going to cross multiply. Beta must be 2 gamma over 3. See? So that will give, simply give me 2 times 6.3 times 10 to the power minus 6 over 3. Now you can press this in your calculator, but I simply know here that 3 year 1. 3 into 6 to 0.1. So 2 times 2.1 will be 4.2 then 6 power minus 6 k Kelvin. And that would be option B. So as you can see, our questions are very, 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 very simple. Okay. Um we move on. The year now is 2013. And we are looking at question number 17. 2013 number 17. Now for this one, example six, we are told a wire of length 100 meters, the initial length is 100 meters, at 30 degrees Celsius, and the initial temperature is 30, has expansivity, linear expansivity to be precise, of 2 times 10 to the power minus 5 per Kelvin. Calculate the length of the wire, the new length L2, at a temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius. Now, the difference between this one and all the ones we've been solving so far is that my length has now changed. It's now minus 10. Sorry, my temperature is now reducing. All my previous temperatures have been increasing, 10 to 100, 0 to 100. But now it is reducing. But that should not matter. Change theta is also still theta 2 minus theta 1. So minus 10 minus 30 is now minus 40. So please don't try to correct the question. Still solve like this. Or you should know if this is minus, my length must be reducing, no longer increasing like we've been seeing so far. That's all. If my temperature change is negative, my length will reduce. My temperature change is positive like all the ones we've solved so far. And my length will increase. So let's see, as usual, L2 equals to L1, 1 plus alpha change of theta. So that will give me um, L100, 1 plus alpha, 2 times 10 to the power minus 5 times minus 40. Now again, time to multiply with tax using scientific calculator. 2 times plus times minus first of all is minus. 2 times 40 is 80. Times 10 to the power minus 5. Then that will be 100 into 1 minus. Let's express this in proper form. Minus 5 is my point to go back 5 times. 0 0.0008. Right? Remember, it was 80 before. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's it. So let's subtract. Um, so with our calculator, 1 minus 0. Point three zeros and then eight gives me 0 0.9992 and if i simply multiply this and the mass that would be 99.92 meters and if i check my options that is option a so you see like i've said before our steps are simple now um we have a question now this is theoretical the year is 2015 and the number is 46. Which of the following does not affect which of the following does not affect an application of expansion in metals? Does not affect an application of expansion in metals. A bimetallic strip thermometer. Now, obviously, that's an application, right? We are using that. That's not just a consequence, that's something we are doing. Those are applications. So, yes, that's an application. Temperature control in an electric iron. We've already stated that a bimetallic strip is used in the electric iron. An electric iron is an application. We're using it. Compensated balance wheel of a watch. Now, in some of your analog watches, not digital, just like those big ones made of metals, 
if they expand they can make your watch move faster and slower therefore temperature can affect it so a compensated balance wheel is an application you are using it to correct that's a usage however option d which is sagging of telephone wires sagging of telephone wires is simply something that happens it's a con it's a consequence not an application we don't get it by sagging telephone wire we just have to do it and see that is my answer okay and um think at this point let's just solve one more example because they are pretty similar apply your formula and you get your answer so i think we should take one more and once we do this one we shall call it quits for this topic of heat and expansion okay um for this question let's be looking at um, the year is 2014 and we are looking at question number 20. so that's question seven a glass bottle of initial volume 2 times 10 is power 4 centimeter cube is heated from 20 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius and the space temperature is 20 and then to 50. Now at this point I'd like to beg us to be very careful when we do the questions. Um, if I'm getting heated from 20 to 50 and I'm getting heated from 20 by 50 are two different things. This is 20 to 50 and then I'm heated from 20 by 50. If I'm going from 20 to 50, it means I start from 20 and I end at 50, correct. If I'm heated from 20 by 50, it means I start from 20 and this by 50 means 50 is getting added to me. Therefore, I'm actually going to stop at 70. So that's the way you have to look at the English language to avoid mistakes. Heated to means I know the initial and the final. Or heated by means I know the initial. When I add this initial to what is heated by, that will give me my final. Just the 10 precautions should be taken when solving. In this case, though, it is heated to. Therefore, there's no more issue there. Change the temperature becomes 50 minus 20, which is 30 degrees Celsius. Okay. If the linear expansivity of glass is 9 times 10 to the power minus 6 per Kelvin, I'm going to find the new volume at 50 degrees Celsius. First things first, I should be using gamma, not alpha. And I know gamma equals to 3 alpha, which will be 3 times 9 times 10 to the power minus 6. 3 times 9 is 27, and 10 to the power minus 6. Then um, let's just see this like this and solve. No need to put it in standard form because that is not our final answer in the first place. So we don't have to bother. So, solving now, I want to find final volume. And as we've been saying so far, V2 must be V1 into 1 plus gamma change in theta. I don't know V2, but V1 is 2 times 10 to the power 4. 1 plus gamma is... 27 times 10 to the power minus 6 and change the theta is 30. So let's use our calculator. But again, because I cannot get standard form with a calculator easily, I'll start by saying 27 times 30. That would be 810 times 10 to the power minus 6. Then if I simply express that in decimal form, that becomes 1 plus. I have to move my point backwards six times. That becomes 0 0.00081. Let's check it and see. This is 810. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you see? Yes, we're having three zeros for the 81. So as we know, 2 times 10 to the power 4 means 2. Then 4 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then times 1 plus this. 1.00081. And all I have to simply do right now is as usual go to my calculator and check 20,000 times 1.00081. And I will get 20,016.2 centimeter cube. So that when I go back, I can see that that is my option 
C. JC, these are all simple questions. And um, the method is the same. If change the theta is positive, then it will increase, or volume or area will increase. But if change the theta is negative, then your length volume or area will decrease. And on that note, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Um, subscribe to this channel and um, you can watch other videos on different topics. And um, you can share this to your friends, you can comment and uh, just keep up with those three schools, get the app, it will help you out. You can also get information. Therefore, get to your three schools, jam app, very, very useful. Well, my name is Atanasius. Thank you and see you next time.